When Adobe reached out and offered to sponsor a video of mine, you could imagine I was pretty chill about it. <laughs> of course I wasn't, I was over the moon. Basically, I was challenged by Adobe to take a look back at my career on the channel and to share that story using Adobe Premiere Pro. And because you guys had such incredible reaction to that video, Adobe has once again sponsored your boy. And you may have clicked this video to find out about the edit challenge, but stay tuned towards the end where I'll walk through all of that. For now, why don't I share some of my best tips and tricks when it comes to editing? Who knows, it might help you with this new edit challenge. So the brief from Adobe Premiere Pro was to create a throwback type of video that had nostalgic vibes without the need of having to leave my bedroom. Now, to me, that sounds ideal. So, you know, I, I accepted the challenge. I was well up for it but suddenly I started to overthink it. I started to overthink it to the point where I got a creative block because I was judging every single decision in my head instantly and telling myself it would not work. I felt like I had this pressure to make an over the top cinematic piece with you know the fancy transitions, the video effects, and just to show off how powerful and amazing Premiere Pro can be. But then I ended up staring at a blank timeline for ages because I didn't have a plan. And then it hit me, why do I need to disguise a video with overly used transitions and effects when the only thing that matters is the story and the journey that you as a viewer get to experience. I wanted to create a video that had sentimental value. The nostalgic vibes had to be strong with this one. So towards the end of the video, once you finish watching it, if you felt something, uh, you could have felt happy, you could have felt proud, you could have felt inspired, you could have cried. I guess I did use certain psychological triggers to pull that emotion out from the viewer. It's very hard to explain, but hopefully I can show you how I achieved all of this in Premiere Pro. And again, at the end of the video, there'll be something interactive that you can get involved with. I'm also offering a seven day free trial to Premiere Pro. The link is in my description. So if you'd like to have a go at editing yourself, links right there, you get a whole week to practice on Premiere Pro completely free. This is the most natural sponsor for me. I'm so ecstatic I've got Adobe as a sponsor. Step one was I wrote a script with a basic structure about my whole journey. And that itself took a couple days. So people out there in colleges and unis, if you think writing is boring and you hate the theory side of things, guess what? It doesn't end there. As much practical work as I do on the field out shooting, when I make YouTube videos, I feel like I'm writing an essay for school, honestly. And then I recorded my voiceover with this microphone uh, straight into Premiere Pro. Premiere makes this a very simple job. You don't need any extra software. It's all built into Premiere. Yeah, I'll show you. It's literally this microphone looking icon over here. Voice over record. If you tap it, three, two, one, and we're rolling. We're, we're recording actual audio. And then when you're ready to stop recording, you just hit the space bar or you click stop and it brings the audio right there for you. To make my audio sound nice and crispy, the first thing I do is I go over to the Essential Sounds tab, I click Dialog, and then I select the Balance Mail preset. That levels out all the audio, it also gives it some good clarity and adds an equalizer on there to make sure my sound from this microphone comes out very, very crispy. Since a young age, I was captivated by films, obsessing over Hollywood directors obsessing over Hollywood directors and influenced by TV shows. Big difference, right? So yeah, if you're planning to do any voiceover stuff to make your vocals sound sexy, check out the Essential Tabs menu. There's a ton of different presets. And music in general is something that makes me feel a certain way. There's songs out there for you if you're feeling sad, happy, or even ratchet. Say no to ratchet, Juicy J, can't. <laughs> Forgive me, it's like two o'clock in the morning and I'm recording this. What I'm getting at is I wanted this video to be a roller coaster of emotions. I wanted to bring you on a journey that had different types of pacing. I wanted the video to feel like you can't take your eyes off of it. And by the end of the video, I wanted you guys to feel something. So I used a mixture of lo-fi remixes of old songs and they helped me to regulate that mood. So the first stage of the editing process was actually fitting my voiceover to that music that I selected. And by the end, I knew that once my groundwork was set and I had my voiceover and music all perfect together, I could then fill in the visual aspect of the video. Because that's pretty simple. That's just inserting 
all of the research that I've done about myself. So if I'm talking about me being back in school, I'll put a video of me being back in school. I also made the music work for me. Sometimes I was faced with a section where I needed to cut a music track, but it sounded a bit too abrupt. So I managed to smooth those sections out, adding a little reverb echo at the end. So this is how I do it. I load up my track. Now, if there's an easier way of doing this, please do let me know in the comments, but this is how I've been doing it. So I cut the end of a track, typically on a snare or a beat, and I extend it out a bit. Then I fade the audio out, leaving a second or two muted. I then nest the audio and add a reverb to that nested sequence, resulting in this effect. <laughs> I'd say that's much better than just a harsh cut, right? Also a sound filter I love using is the low pass. It makes your audio sound as if you're queuing outside a nightclub. For me, this is like the audio version of being able to focus your lens onto a subject. Mm, this is like the audio version of being able to focus your lens onto a subject. Once you have multiple layers of audio stacked on top of each other, you can use that effect to sort of pick what your audience can focus into. So after a lot of chopping and moving audio clips around, this was the finished timeline of my voiceover and music mixed together. It amounted to about nine minutes and it had gaps to where I planned to put some montage sequences into. For anybody planning on doing a throwback video or the next YouTube rewind, allow yourself a lot of time to prep and research all the clips that you need to slot in. And once you have all that footage, stay organized. In Premiere, this is really easy, but a lot of people forget to do it. And sometimes I'm guilty of that if I'm in a rush, but honestly, you'll appreciate it after, trust me. In your project tab where your media gets imported, you'll see this little folder icon called new bin. Just click that and name it whatever you like. Personally, I like to have separate folders for assets such as music, sound, effects, footage, sequences. The list goes on and it changes with every project. So to be honest, there's no one way of doing this. It's whatever works for you. I mean, I don't come into your house and tell you how to organize your sock drawer, do I? I still have my first ever YouTube channel that I created over 10 years ago that has some old archive footage. You know, stuff that I shot on my phone. What phone did I have? I had a Nokia 6880 and I had a Nokia N95. Those were my first camera phones. So for those people that say, oh, what camera do I get to film stuff? Don't worry, mate, just use your phone camera. And if you don't have a camera on your phone, then stop being childish. I also got my mum to send me a bunch of photos of me when I was little. And yes, I've been to Madame Tussauds. And you know what? Just because you guys are watching this video, I have an exclusive picture right here of me, and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. How about one of this nation's most lovable people, Anton Deck. Yeah, here's another one of me trying to hug them awkwardly or touch their shoulders. I don't know what I'm doing. I was 12, leave me alone. So I've got all this footage. I'm putting it into my timeline, but it looks boring. There's nothing fancy around it. Anyone can just whack in a picture or two. You know, that's called making a PowerPoint presentation. I might as well have done that. No, I'm better than that. I can jazz it up a bit. What do I do? I put my pictures on an orange background. <laughs> Yes, that's it. Something as simple as that can be quite effective. And I created that by going to this part of the screen, uh, new color matte, and I made it orange. You can pick any color you want, but yeah, I made my orange because orange is considered to be an energetic color and it's associated with feelings of excitement and enthusiasm and warmth. And that's what Google says. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I learned that in uni. <laughs> oh, what did I learn in uni? How to, how to down a pint really quick. But going into the whole thing about what color represents what is a whole different topic I can go into. Maybe we'll leave that for another video. Just bear in mind, next time you're hit with a mid roll, sorry, was there a mid roll right there? My bad. So next time you're hit with a mid roll uh, with a certain type of product and they used certain type of colors, just, just pause it and have a think. Why did they use those colors? How is it making me feel? So is that kind of stuff in videography and editing is the kind of thing that makes me passionate about this. I enjoy using these psychological editing techniques in my videos. It's just quite interesting to me. I saw somebody left a comment saying that the sound of the old tape rewinding gave them feelings of their past. I'm using a sound that you might recognize from your past to bring back memories for you. So my videos triggered more feelings. Yay. Although they didn't specify if it was a good feeling or not. It might have been very traumatic. In that case, I'm sorry. So I had a lot of clips that were actually shot on a VHS camera in my edit, but some clips weren't. Some clips were, you know, fresh 4K. So I needed to degrade that footage and make it look VHS-y. So there are sections of my video where I imitate the VHS style. So I did this by creating a new 
black video layer and apply an, a noise filter along with wave warp. Wave warp. Wave, wave warp. And to top it all off, I created a new adjustment layer with the noise filter to blend in the look even more. So that's my quick and easy, simple method of creating something that has a VHS feel with a bit of grain on it. If you have any other suggestions, please do leave them in the comments. I'm always interested in learning new techniques. And this is the method of doing it without any extra plugins or make your computer run slow. You know what? I think we need to show some love to the Lumetri color tab as well. My favorite feature to use will be the curves selection, especially the hue saturation curves. This tool lets you focus on any color and change the saturation, hue, and lumens. For example, seen here from a stock clip I got, this was the original color, and then I adjusted it to suit the brand colors of the Premiere Pro icon. Another thing that I used in my edit was footage from a 360 camera. I'm not sure how many of you have worked with 360 cameras. Well, I absolutely love it. The workflow is a bit more extra than with just a normal video file because basically, you have the freedom to choose any angle you want in the video clip. How amazing is that? So here's an example of this 360 clip. Uh, I have a free plugin from GoPro themselves that allows you to keyframe 360 footage. You know what? I'm going to upload you guys a clip from one of my 360 cameras. So you can download Premiere Pro yourself for free. The links in my description and you can mess around with the footage that I'm gonna give you, just so you can see how fun 360 footage can be. So once you install the GoPro FX Reframe plugin, you'll be able to drag it onto the 360 clip, and now you have full control over your footage. All you have to do is keyframe and move your clip about. The plugin for Premiere Pro makes this feature very seamless to use, and very it's very in intuitive. Did I say that right? Intuit intuitive. <laughs> it's very easy to use, mate. All right, get on with it. <laughs> Some other very basic features that you might not have discovered yet that I enjoy in Premiere Pro. The crop tool, it does what it says on the tin. Have you ever found yourself uh, wanting to crop around an image, but you're using masks and that could be fiddly sometimes because you might not need all that extra control. You might just wanna literally crop the left or the right hand side, maybe the top, the bottom. The possibilities are, I was gonna say they're endless, but they're not. There's just four options. <laughs> what side do you wanna crop? But yeah, it's very easy to use again you drag and drop it onto your clip. That saved me the hassle of having to use the masking tool. Why is nobody talking about captions? That function has been greatly improved by Premiere Pro over the years. And I found myself adding subtitles to more of my videos now because of how easy it is to use. It doesn't feel like a chore now. So simply go to window, click text, and then this new text panel, select and create a new caption trap. Click OK and then hit that plus icon and add new caption segment. You can then double click into the text on your preview screen and on the text panel to edit your text. All of the text properties can be adjusted in the essential graphics tab. Just remember when you export your video in the captions tab, make sure you select burn captions into video. Otherwise you won't see them in your final render. Adobe also has a text to speech options available in the beta versions of Premiere Pro. It analyzes your audio tracks and adds in the captions for you. Now that's an exciting feature and I'll definitely be using it, especially when it comes to posting videos on social media platforms that don't provide auto captions such as Twitter and Instagram. So this now brings me into the edit contest. Another one. In this challenge, we will be creating a 15 to 30 second advert for a hairstyling product, Bloomin. The other day, I shot a bunch of cinematic shots of the product, and now it's your turn to take my footage and create an advert showing off the product in its best way. I'll provide you a selection of copyright free music for you to use in the edit, so please don't use anything else. You are encouraged to create your own sound design to make your edit stand out, as well as any other creative decisions that you think will bag you a win winning spot. You must use Premiere Pro to edit your video. I want to see your skills in that software. I will pick out 10 winners who will get a cash prize of £100 each. Adobe are also allowing me the chance to give one lucky winner a whole year subscription to Adobe Creative Cloud. And for those of you saying I can't afford Premiere Pro, well, Adobe are giving away a seven day free trial. So if you sign up with the link in my description, you will get seven days free. Please do check the terms and conditions of the free trial contract so that you are aware as to what you are potentially locking into once the seven days end. You can also use other apps from the Creative Cloud, such as Art Effects, Photoshop, and Illustrator to help you with your edit. To submit your entry, upload your video edit to Instagram and use the hashtag Premiere Pro 
contest. That way, I'll be able to see your video. Keep your video short and snappy. Anything from 15 to 30 seconds will be ideal. And that's it. Just be creative. And don't forget to check out the link in the description for your seven day free trial to Adobe Premiere Pro. Oh, deadline. Oh my God, deadline. You have, the deadline is here on screen right now. It's in text, don't forget. I'm really looking forward to reacting what you guys come up with once again, and I'll see you guys in the next video.